Welcome everyone. My name is Wilma Hodges and I'll be moderating this session. Please note that all the attendees are muted for the session, so if you have questions, please enter them into the questions box and go to webinar. We will be saving up questions to answer at the end, so go ahead and type them in and we'll take some Q&A at the end of the presentation. The session will be recorded and will be available on YouTube later, um, probably in a week or so. If you have any problems with audio or video, please put a comment in the, in the question area and I'll try to handle those offline. This presentation is titled Sakai-Based Conditional Release Technologies in Management Education and our presenter for this session is Dr. Owen Hall, Jr. Dr. Owen P. Hall, Jr. holds the Julian Virtue Professorship and is a Rothschild Applied Research Fellow. He is a full professor of decision sciences at the George L. Graziato uh, School of Business and Management at Pepperdine University. He is the recipient of both the Charles Luckman and Howard A. White Teaching Excellence Award. Dr. Hall has over 35 years of academic and industry experience. He's a registered professional engineer, State of California. Dr. Hall is also the author of several textbooks on computer-based decision making and has written extensively on cloud-based collaboration, data mining, and hybrid learning. He's a member of the Beta Gamma Sigma and Delta Mu Delta Honor Society. Dr. Hall is also a member of Informs It and membership committees. Dr. Hall recently received a grant from GMAC to design a collaboration network for enhancing graduate management education. He received his PhD from the University of Southern California and undertook postdoctoral studies at the Center for Futures Research. So let me turn it over now to Dr. Hall. Thank you. Good afternoon and welcome. Today, business educators are under growing pressure to engage in significant reforms in the face of globalization, new learning technologies, soaring tuitions, and unprecedented economic uncertainty. One approach for meeting these challenges is through the increased use of learning management systems in general and conditional release technologies so-called CRTs in particular. The primary aim of CRTs is to distribute knowledge in small and more manageable learning packages based on student performance and characteristics. Intelligent tutors provide the vehicle for helping identify the appropriate material. The primary objective of this presentation is to share with you some specific opportunities for using conditional release technologies throughout management education. The agenda for this presentation is highlighted in this slide. We will begin with an overview of some of the major challenges facing management education. Then we will discuss some of the current slants and trends in the delivery of management education. Next we will introduce the central ideas behind conditional release technologies as applied to the business community universe. The presentation will conclude with some lessons learned and a blueprint for further developments. The quote from Larry Ellison at the bottom of this slide speaks for itself. The increased use of the Internet for improving learning outcomes in management education is being encouraged by the business community. Business leaders recognize the need for graduates that can transition effectively into today's web center globalized economy. The advent of globalization has ushered in a new era of business challenges which need to be addressed throughout the management education community of practice. For an example, facing many students is rising tuitions. The cost associated with some MBA programs now exceeds $100,000. Additionally, the global economy has been in the doldrums for years, and it appears that this pattern will continue. 
In this regard, many students are reluctant to enroll in management education programs given the uncertainty of the marketplace. This combination of ongoing forces makes it imperative that business schools offer programs that meet the needs of the marketplace and that are delivered in a cost-effective manner. One way to meet these goals is through the judicious use of new learning technologies like CRTs. This chart highlights some slants and trends in the use of technology throughout management education. It is interesting to note that so-called online programs, which include hybrid courses, are growing at a significantly higher rate than traditional management education programs. This is due in part to the flexibility and convenience offered by hybrid and online programs compared to traditional face-to-face -face offerings. Faculty are increasingly using technology in the classroom. Nearly 90% believe that using Internet-based te learning technologies are important to fulfilling their institution's mission. Also, more than 80% of the faculty believe that online learning tools can create efficiencies in teaching and improving student performance and learning outcomes. Even AACSB has gotten into the act recently by completing a study on the globalization of management education. Not surprising, the results show a growing gap between the changing needs of the business community and the programs being offered by business schools. The resultant report recommended the following specific actions. One, strengthening the use of international partnerships. Two, expanding internationalization within the curriculum, and three, connecting various academic activities through collaboration. One example, identifying best practices in online learning. Collaboration provides a universal cloud-based platform in which the management education community can converge, share, and exchange ideas to drive innovation in student learning. Through collaboration, the full potential of conditional release technologies can be realized. Mobile learning, or M-learning, continues to grow in popularity, particularly among the millennium generation, on a worldwide basis. This cultural and technological phenomenon suggests opportunities for utilizing social media throughout management education for enhancing the learning process and learning outcomes. Typically, mobile learning is defined as the acquisition of knowledge through conversations across multiple contexts via interactive social media-based technologies. Some specific characteristics of the mobile learning paradigm include, one, provides for increased student convenience and flexibility. Two, offers the capability to receive live webcasts on a worldwide basis. Three, presents instructor, instructional rich content with real-time feedback. Four, increases opportunities for student and team participation and interaction. And in five, improves quality control through content integration. Education at all levels, including management education, basically consists of three components, content, delivery, and outcomes. 
The key is to ensure that these three components are in balance. For example, having a world-class content management delivery system, such as Sakai, without a comparable level of content or without the appropriate performance measurements for assessing student outcomes, does not optimize the true power and efficiency of learning from the web. In many schools of business, the delivery system tends to be far more developed than either content or outcome assessments. The e-learning success model, as outlined here, suggests that the overall effectiveness of mobile learning depends on the attainment of success at each of the three stages, design, delivery, and outcome measurements. The effective use of this e-learning paradigm will require the integration of all three stages. The e-learning success model provides the platform for implementing the conditional release systems methodology. A learning management system, LMS for short, is a web-based platform for delivering content, monitoring student participation, and assessing learning outcomes. This graphic illustrates how our Sakai-based LMS fits within the larger IT infrastructure at Pepperdine University. As can be seen, our Sakai-based LMS significantly alters the three pillars of traditional instruction, that is, fixed time, fixed location, and fixed learning pace with a more flexible and customized learning environment. Some specific characteristics of the Pepperdine LMS include student access options, integrated learning, real-time feedback, and conditional release technologies. Conditional release technologies offer students a wide variety of learning opportunities based on customized content. A well-designed CRT can identify and deliver specific content based on student performance and characteristics. The data shows that students tend to participate more in learning systems that are content-rich and that feature extensive variety, which is a hallmark of conditional release technologies. Research has also found that students tend to be more engaged in the learning process with systems that give them the highest level of bandwidth and engagement without technological interference or latency. The fundamental idea behind CRT is that delivery of so-called bite-sized packets of knowledge in a progressive format. The key is to size the packets and delivery tempo to meet the specific background and interest of each student. The rationale for employing the CRT paradigm is highlighted in this slide. It is generally recognized that students in entering a program of management education possess a wide range of experiences and capabilities. CRT allows for the customization of content based on such differences. CRT can support the ongoing monitoring of student performance and thus be in a position to intervene as needed. Additionally, the CRT methodology can be used to provide refresher material over the course of a student's degree program. Equally important, CRT acquaints students with the technology currently being used throughout the business community. This slide highlights the basic methodology associated with the CRT learning paradigm. The overall process begins with a measurement rubric, for example, a quiz, as illustrated in the simplified CRT diagram. 
In this application, setting the student takes a baseline quiz to determine the appropriate content level based on the quiz performance results. Appropriate content is then released based on these outcomes. An important variation on this model is that the student is assigned an introductory core module and after reviewing the material it is presented with an end of module quiz. If the student passes the quiz, a new learning module is presented. Otherwise, the student is directed back to the previous material for additional review. Presented here is an outline of a CRT-based course in statistics. Many students are challenged by statistics even though it is playing an ever-increasing role in business management, so-called big data. This Sakai-based course includes interactive exercises, homework problems and solutions, readings, and business simulations. The course is presently serving as a supplement to both undergraduate and graduate business management programs. Specific topical areas include descriptive statistics, inferential statistics, and forecasting. Providing the student with a dynamic and interactive experience is a must in today's business world. Business games also provide a perfect example of how material can be presented via the Sakai LMS. Students do not need to complete this course in any given time period, but can return when they left, where they left off and continue with the material. There are, of course, other measurement rubrics other than quizzes that can be used to assess student performance, and that is an area of research we are presently exploring. A fundamental tenet of the CRT design is that one size does not fit all. That is, students do not learn at the same pace and they are impacted differently by the learning environment. One key to effective learning in this context is a customized learning plan where the specific strengths and weaknesses of each student are identified and measured and appropriate feedback provided. Often this can be accomplished through the use of intelligent tutors. For a CRT to operate independently requires a responsive system that can assess student performance and respond accordingly. This functionality is provided by intelligent tutors. Intelligent tutors can be used to design lesson plans and learning experiences based on student performance and background. One example. If a student is having difficulty in mastering a particular subject or theme as detected by testing, simulation, or self-assessment, then the intelligent agent would prescribe specific additional learning content to the student. This content can take the form of videos, computing tutorials, or business simulations. A well-designed intelligent tutor should be able to assess the student's current knowledge state and to modify both the lesson plan and content level accordingly. The bottom line is to use these tutors as a personal trainer. And much is being done here in the research area, uh, building on the success of Watson on the game show Jeopardy. So this is an area where uh, you will be seeing much more work over the next couple of years. The, the student-tutor interface can display previous performance as measured by examinations or simulations. These data can be used to construct a customized lesson plan as well as provide for specific uh, learning suggestions as gleaned from case scenario consultation. 
The agent can also link to the overall curriculum to ensure consistency. In a typical learning application, the student is guided through a series of prompts for a given problem-solving application. Conceptually, the consultation can be viewed more than once since, among other things, some of the prompts are randomized. This type of learning construct has been used successfully in a variety of business disciplines, including the fields of management and accounting. Another promising capability of intelligent tutors is to connect students based on common interests. Intelligent tutors can organize students with similar study interests into project groups to facilitate cooperation and collaboration. This graphic illustrates the evolution of web-based learning from 1.0 to 3.0 in terms of several key characteristics. Internet learning started with Web 1.0, where users were limited to passive viewing of content. Web 2.0 represented a major step forward in the learning process by permitting individuals and groups to interact and collaborate as creators and distributors of content. This approach exemplifies the andrological learning philosophy introduced by Malcolm Knowles in the 1960s. Three key assumptions associated with the andrological paradigm are, one, learning is problem-centered rather than content-centered, two, learners are internally motivated and self-directed, and three, learners bring life experiences and knowledge to the learning process. These axes are consistent with the overall Web.2 structural design. Some examples of Web 2.0 in a management education learning environment include social networking, collaboration, video sharing, cloud computing, and simulations. With the advent of Web 3.0, the opportunities for improving the learning process are literally unlimited through the use of collaborative tagging. Often the term somatic web is used to describe Web 3.0. The transition to Web 3.0 in management education will rely heavily on intelligent tutors based conditional release technologies. It is quite apparent that the web is playing an ever-increasing role in higher education in general and management education in particular. This observation is supported by both the recent literature and a number of global surveys. The experience gained to date with CRT suggests a variety of opportunities for increasing learning outcomes. Expanding faculty training via collaboration represents one key step in ensuring success with the new technologies. As mentioned earlier, evaluating alternative release methods beyond quizzes is another area requiring attention. Also, an assessment on learning outcomes needs to be conducted. Finally, using CRT for degree completion initiatives should be explored. There can be little doubt that the face of management education is changing and changing rapidly. Four of the factors driving these changes are technology, globalization, student demographics, and continuing economic uncertainty. New learning paradigms, like conditional release technologies, can deliver customized content and know-how at a time and place convenient to the student. This is essential in today's social media-based learning universe. In addition to the standalone course model, conditional release technologies can be used in a variety of other settings, including boot camps, remedial instruction, supplemental material, and yes, even student recruiting. These applications may turn out to be the primary for future of this learning model. To this end, faculty engagement is essential.
for the Grazi Idea School. This is Professor Owen Hall, Jr. speaking. Thanks for listening, and we hope to see you here next time. Good day. Great. Thank you, Professor Hall. Um, we do have a, have a few questions that have come in, so I'll just go ahead and read them off in the order that they were received. Um, the first question is, what was the name of the AACSB study that you mentioned? I can uh, get that to you. My emailing address is ohall at pepperdine.edu. Okay, great. And um, we have another question. By intelligent agents or tutors, do you mean computer programs or humans? We're talking computer programs. I used as an illustration Watson on the game show Jeopardy. Imagine a future where every youngster on their uh, tablet, laptop has a Watson who is designed to assist the student in the learning process. Great. Um, have you heard of how to go G, if I'm saying that correctly? And if so, uh, what does that, how does that fit into your approach for supporting learning? Can you repeat the question? I didn't quite get the first part. Right. Have you heard of uh, how to go goji? It's spelled H E U T A G O G Y. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly. And if so, how does that fit into your approach to support learning? I have not heard of that name, uh, but uh, there's a lot of research uh, underway as we speak. If the person asking the question wants to send me an email, perhaps we can follow up. Okay, great. And what functionality exists in Sakai that supports conditional release technologies? Well, we have uh, lessons, which is a, a fundamental component of the Sakai uh, system. And through that, we uh, implemented the uh, uh, testing process that I outlined earlier. And it's relatively straightforward. So, for an example, uh, if a student is able to pass the quiz, then they uh, are allowed to advance to the next learning module. That's what we've been able to accomplish uh, so far. Is, the is this structure something that you consider feasible for small institutions and individual courses at this point, or is it something that requ requires a larger team to develop and support? Well, if the institution has access to Sakai, uh, the model that we've outlined can be implemented there. If you don't have a learning management system, then, then it's going to be more challenging, although it's possible to have customized uh, CRTs for uh, specific applications. So it kind of just makes it a little more uh, convenient because you can have uh, applications across all of the disciplines using basically the same template. Right, so individual instructors could set it up within their courses. Um, they wouldn't necessarily need a team to develop it. No, you, once you get into this a little bit, and we've been blessed with our IT staff, once you get into it, it's fairly uh, straightforward. Uh, the most important assignment is, uh, is getting the right content and the right content level. Uh, that's the real challenge, not the mechanism of the release process. Great. Are there any other questions? Okay, I'm not seeing any new questions coming in. So, Dr. Hall, if you have any, um, you know, wrap-up remarks. Well, again, thank you for attending, and uh, be happy to share our uh, our uh, research. And we've had several publications. And uh, send me an email once again at ohall at pepperdine.edu, and we could take the next step. Otherwise, thanks for listening, and hope to see you soon. Thank you. Right. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Hall. It was a great presentation. And I thank all of you in the audience for, um, for listening in. And um, I think this is our last breakout session of the day. The next one coming up is the, uh, the Q&A session with our keynote. That's at 4.30. Uh, so hopefully I will see you in that session. Thanks, everyone.